Today we're going to look at feminist social theory. And we're going to look at three questions in particular. One is how have women sought to engage with social theory? How can we account for issues of gender in male-defined social theories? And do men and women have different concepts and terms through which they think about the world? Standpoint theory has sought to engage with some of these questions. How might sociology look if it began from women's standpoint? Adding in women's issues does not change the standpoint built into sociology. According to the social theorist Dorothy Smith, there are two modes of knowing. The first mode of how we know things is male-defined social theory. Male-defined social theory separates knowers from their interests and their biases in order to come up with an objective standard of knowledge. The second mode of knowing is standpoint theory. Standpoint theory is the direct embodied experience of the everyday world as the primary ground of our knowledge. Here is a quote from Dorothy Smith. We are the authoritative speakers of our experience. The standpoint of women situates the sociological subject prior to the entry into the abstracted conceptual mode vested in texts that is the order of the relations of ruling. From this standpoint, we know the everyday world through the particularities of our local practices and activities, in the actual places of our work, and the actual time it takes. There are some social theorists, such as Nancy Hartsock, who have sought to bring standpoint theory together with Marxist theories of historical materialism. Historical materialism was Marx's idea that class, position, structures social relations. The innovation of Marx was to present social theory from the point of view of the proletariat. So feminist theorists like Nancy Hartsock ask, how can we present social theory from the standpoint of women? She suggests five ways that we can do that. One, we can look at the ways in which material life structures social relations, much as Marx did. Secondly, we can look at how different groups in the class and gender structure have opposing viewpoints. We can look at how the ruling class or the ruling gender structures material relations. We can look at how the oppressed group, women, must struggle to portray their vision. And finally, the adoption of a standpoint exposes the relations among humans as inhuman. Feminist theorists like Nancy Hartsock use Marxist terminology but adapt it in order to think about women's specific experience. Nancy Hartsock talks about the sexual division of labor rather than simply the class division of labor that Marx described. Hartsock argues that women's labor is different from men's labor. It consists of their responsibility for subsistence and their contribution to child rearing in addition to production tasks. While men produce commodity, commodities, women also produce use values. If you recall back to our earlier lectures, a use value is the intrinsic value of a commodity that satisfies a human need or want. Through their work and subsistence providing for the subsistence needs of themselves and their families, women are engaged in producing use values and not just exchange values. For Hartsock, the feminist standpoint emerges from the material conditions of women's everyday experiences as different to that of men. Black feminists like Patricia Hill Collins have extended standpoint theory to talk about a black feminist standpoint. Collins argues that black women's standpoint is, quote, the experiences and ideas shared by African American women that provide a unique angle on self, community, and society. She says that black women's standpoint contains the unique theme of a struggle against racism and sexism. This brings African-American women together. 
Collins is interested in how a black woman's standpoint can create a collective identity among African American women. There is a need to aggregate and articulate individual expressions of consciousness to create a group consciousness. Collins disputes links between biology and consciousness. Being black and female does not automatically make you a black feminist. 